In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into the input-driven input schemes. That means the new input system and the legacy input manager. So anytime you're using, you know, keyboard, mouse, gamepad, Xbox controller, etc., this these would be input-driven input schemes. So we'll start by taking a look at the structure of the character. You have the root object, which contains all the components like the character controller, the character, which is our main control script, and the audio source if you elect to have one added. And then there's the model object underneath that, which contains all of the motion matching scripts, strider, final IK, grounder, which is what puts the feet on the ground when you're running on inclines or stairs and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna focus on the player character and specifically on the input scheme. Now you'll notice when I double click this, it doesn't go to an asset in the higher in the project, sorry, because it's been cloned. And the reason why we clone this scriptable object, which controls the input actions, is so that you can have multiple independent player driven characters that are driven by different inputs and not tied to one another. Now let's walk through, if you go to 3PEAT or so assets, plugins, 3PEAT, MMC locomotion configs, you'll see that we have a uh, input manager, input system, and nav mesh input schemes already configured for you. And we'll talk about how they work. And you can duplicate these, add more. You can also just right click, create 3PEAT input scheme and you can just pick new ones so you can make as many of these as you like but in this video we'll start with input system and we'll move on to input manager we'll be covering the nav mesh one in its own dedicated videos so for input system all of your input schemes are going to be whether or not you wish to do environment aware trajectories and that means when the character starts running towards a wall or they're going to have to stop that causes it to automatically slow the character down and stop it before it runs into the wall and stop the animation so it's not just sitting there executing a running animation even though it's not moving anymore. And so you can choose where to start engaging this as terms of distance from the obstacle and how often to uh, adjust the input vector. Now this, this isn't really based on environment aware trajectories. This really is how responsive to user input do you want your input vector to be. So how often should we read the controls, the keyboard, the mouse, the whatever just driving the user input. This is 0.05, which means it's going to happen 20 times a second, which is more than enough to have responsive controls and not have any lag. All right. So input system settings is really driven by an input action asset. Now this one is right here. And so if you're, if you're unfamiliar with input system, please pause this video, go find any of the numerous input system tutorials on, uh, on YouTube, walk through it and get comfortable. But at the end of the day, there's the movement control, which is controlled by the left gamepad stick or the D-pad. There's jumping, sprinting, which is a, you sprint while you're holding down left shift. Jump occurs when you press the space, space key. We'll talk a little bit more about the details there because jumping is a little more complex. If you press space quickly, you will do a small jump. If you hold down space for a configured amount of time, it will go into a big jump. And that's also configurable, disableable. You can make it so that there's no such thing as a big jump. Um, and you can also configure the jump force of each of those. So you have all of these actions. You have a crouch toggle, which is left control in my setup. And then mouse look drives the camera orbiting for the Cinemachine controller. And all of that with our, with just this prototype Cinemachine free look controller we gave as a, um, just for prototyping, all of that's completely automatically configured. If you're using Input Manager, it automatically selects the appropriate mouse X, mouse Y, and the appropriate uh, mouse delta position to handle orbiting. And if you're using the input system, it automatically selects this mouse look control. So, all right, so let's get back to the Input Manager. So if you're, sorry, Input System. So if you go back to the input system, that's where the input actions default, that's where you drag in the one you wanna use, and then you specify which input action map you wanna use, and that's player. So I'll go ahead and open them up again so we can talk about it. You'll notice the action map is player, so we just have to match that string over to the appropriate one. We have move, jump, sprint, and crouch toggle. These can be whatever you want. You can change them on the fly in real time, any of these, and it will adjust to it. Um, so like I said, for the big jump, this is saying you hold it for about a third of a second, it's going to go into a big jump uh, evolution. Um, and then when sprinting, you can choose whether you want it to just, if you just tap spacebar, it just does a max, max height jump. So that's the input system controls. And that's really it for this. If you want to switch this character over to the legacy input manager, and here, I'll go ahead and hit play so that you can see that I'm 
that the controls are actually working in this form. So we're using the input system. I'm orbiting using the mouse. And here I'll just run back and forth with WASD. Hold down Shift, I'll get some Sprint. And then I'll hit Control to crouch. And then there's a small jump. There's a big jump. Okay, so now let's move. Let's change this character over to a input manager based input scheme. So you just drag in the input manager asset and let's walk through what that does. Same, same, you have your vector change control. You have your, you know, how, what kind of interval you want to use to get your input vector. These are all common settings, but then input manager specific, you're going to pick your move axis, horizontal, vertical. Um, it will automatically use mouse X and mouse Y for the camera orbit because that's already preset in every, uh, just like horizontal and vertical, but it's preset for every Unity project that has a input manager support. And then you can select what you want your primary and secondary key codes or your inputs to be um, for each of the functions. And this is whether you use joysticks, joystick axes, which if you have joystick left trigger and right trigger set up, then left trigger will control um, sprinting. The uh, And same, same, you have your your big jumps. So let's go ahead and fire this up. So we're running around. We can sprint. Here's a small jump. Oh, option to show the environment or where. Notice how he just stops and he's just standing there staring at the wall. So he can run as long as it's not in the direction of the wall. He can't do anything like that. So that's your environmental aware trajectories. But if he's not going to be stopped by it, it'll just he'll just keep going, as you would expect. But it's really only if he can't uh, move anymore. We'll stop the animations and we'll stop him from trying to just continue to run into the wall. And that's it for this video.